Hello everybody. Um, some people from the BI532 mini project have asked me about uh, something weird that their line with a work plot is doing and I just want to take this opportunity to uh, give you a little bit of information what's going on here. So I took the data from uh, one of the students here. Uh, ethanol concentration um, and uh, then uh, here the rate. Uh, don't worry about the units at this uh, moment. And obviously for a line with a Berg plot you need to convert the um, um, the x-axis and the y-axis. So on a line with a Berg plot we, pre we plot 1 over the substrate concentration on the x-axis. So these data here are 1 over the ethanol concentration here and you do the same with the 1 over the rate and you plot that on the y-axis. And when you do that you get uh, something like that here. So this is your line with a Berg plot and I've included the uh, uh, Excel trend line and also the equation here. So the equation basically uh, tells you that the gradient of this is 0 0.2 roughly 1. Uh, the intercept is 21.98 and the R square value uh, is 0 0.9 uh, and I come back to that in a minute. Now let's just quickly revise what the line with a Berg plot actually uh, tells us. So it tells us uh, that here the intercept, this is uh, 1 over Vmax. The intercept here is minus, so that's negative 1 over Km. And the gradient of that is Km over Vmax. And um, the student uh, was concerned actually that um, the that the line of best fit is uh, you know is a little bit iffy and that uh, this value here really makes a huge difference to how you would uh, put the line of best fit. So if you didn't have this one here you would probably put a line of best fit through that. And that actually shows the big problem of a line with a Berg plot because it uh, heavily um, puts emphasis on data that uh, are high up. So on the high 1 over s, which actually, uh, if you think about it, this is 1 over s, this data point. So actually it is uh, correlated to the smallest data point here. So this small uh, th this data point of the smallest uh, substrate concentration has a massive impact on how we put the line of best fit, how Excel calculates the uh, line of best fit. And uh, this is in a way problematic because the these small concentrations here, this is where we make the biggest error, pipetting error and so on. So in a way, uh, a line with a Berg plot puts a huge emphasis on uh, the data that are not terribly accurate. So we can, of course, now try to uh, figure out what our uh, Km and uh, Vmax is. So in a way, what we can do is we can say, right, what is our Vmax here according to the, um, to the calculation? that uh, we get here. So from the trend line, so this would be 1 over divided by the intercept and that is roughly 22. So that would be our intercept, so that would be 0 0.045. That would be our Vmax. And I mean, to be perfectly honest, uh, there are a three, at least three rates that are bigger than the calculated Vmax. What is our Km? For the Km, 
we uh, need to uh, calculate this point here. And this point here is uh, given as um, 1 over uh, intercept 22 divided by the gradient, and that is 0 0.21 roughly. Uh, so here for the Km, we get uh, 0 0.095, and obviously the unit would be molar, that's the same unit as this one here, and here the unit would be um, micromolar per minute. And, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure if I really should buy these numbers. Now let's have a quick look what we would get if we just simply calculated that with the line of, with the least square method. So here I've got again uh, the data, here's the ethanol concentration, here's the rate, and what I've done here is I've calculated um, an, uh, a Michaelis Menten curve. Let me do it uh, this way. So just simply from the michaelis menten equation, and I used uh, some arbitrary Vmax and Km, which I just uh, put in here. And I got this uh, Vmax just simply by looking at the data and said, oh, well, it could be around 0 0.06 uh, uh, Vmax. So that would be the highest number here. 0 0.06 and uh, if I have a Vmax uh, of 0 0.06 uh, what is half Vmax? Well that's around 0 0.03 so that would be around here and the substrate concentration that gives me that would be around 0 0.05 so these are here my estimates and I probably should say that estimates uh, for Vmax and Km. And what I can do now is uh, with these uh, estimates I can calculate uh, the uh, expected data, uh, the expected rate, and I can calculate the, uh, the difference between the um, observed rate minus the calculated rate. So let's do that here. So difference. So this would be equals uh, this minus this. Like that. Okay. And here's something uh, quite interesting. Remember uh, in the, uh, in the previous one, we said the, the big issue here is with this point here, which correlates or which corresponds this point here corresponds actually to this data pair here. So to the, to the first data pair. And this obviously is quite problematic because we uh, can't do anything really precise there. And we see that in the difference here. We see that, that the biggest contribution to the differences is the first data point. Now, uh, we can do an optimization. So we need the square of the difference. And I just simply took the square of uh, the data here. And uh, this is plotted here. And again, what we see is our first data point makes the biggest contribution to the square of differences. I can now also do the sum of the square of the difference. And then I can run uh, my uh, optimization program, which is called a uh, solver. So in order to do that, you go to data and you need to have the solver installed. And there are lots of YouTube videos uh, uh, around that show you how to install the data analysis packet and the solver packet here. 
So you want uh, the solver. So click on uh, the solver. And um, we want the objective. We want this number here, the sum of the square of the differences, as low as possible. So this is in L13. And we want it a minimum. We want to change our estimates. These are here, D3 and D4. Maybe I should move this a little bit so that you can see that. OK, so uh, the rest is good. And we just simply say solve. And the program will come up with uh, a solution. So what we see here is we have it really minimized it and we get our Vmax and Km. And let's say we want to keep that. So our Vmax in this case is 0 0.055. 0 0.055. Let me simply write this down quickly. Vmax 0 0.055. Five, five, and Km roughly 0 0.03. And what we can do now is we can uh, compare that with uh, what we got from the line with a Berg plot. So here we got Vmax 0 0.045. So quite different. And here our, our Km is way out. So this actually shows that the line with a Berg plot really uh, has some issues. If we compare that with the, uh, with the uh, curve fitting that is given by this uh, solver uh, program. Now uh, I can remove this here. Um, Obviously, line with a Berg plot is a pretty lousy plot because it uh, makes bias, uh, especially of these small uh, numbers here. But what we can do is we can try to get a sort of uh, a guesstimate uh, when we do a little bit of regression analysis. And you can do that. Uh, you can do regression analysis with a built-in function in Excel. What you do is we just simply take here our data set of the one over numbers for the line with a Berg plot. We go to data analysis and you have to have this tool pack installed. So check out uh, videos on YouTube how do you do that. So uh, you go to data analysis, it opens another window and there is one uh, item that's called regression. So click OK. And what it does now is it will ask you a few questions. So it will uh, ask you for the Y input range. So that the Y input range, that is our uh, 1 over rate. So let's just simply put this in here like that. It asks us for our X input range. That's this one here. OK. Now we do have labels. These are the labels here. And we want a confidence interval of 95%. And uh, we want the output in the same workbook. So we put the output here. Uh, let's not worry about the residuals. That's something for another day. And we just simply ask of, uh, Excel to do a regression analysis. And it comes up with uh, quite a number of uh, data here. Um, uh, OK, so what we get here is the regression analysis gives us um, the regression analysis gives us also an intercept. And this is uh, this guy here. So the intercept uh, is uh, 21.98. And that's uh, pretty much the same as we see here in this equation. And the um, uh, 1 over s, so the gradient of this, uh, is uh, the same as we see here. But we get more information in this, 
in this regression analysis than just simply here. So what do we get? We get, for example, we get uh, a p-value. Now that's quite useful. So here's a p-value. Uh, and uh, this p-value basically tells us uh, whether this uh, line actually goes up or whether it uh, it it is uh, or it, it 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 could be like that it could be like that but it actually it tells us the probability that it is not just a flat line so here we can say uh, the p value is uh, much smaller than our confidence level 0 0.05 and therefore uh, the, the gradient that it actually is a positive correlation is statistically significant so that's uh, quite good it tells us also something else and that is probably in this context is uh, even more interesting it tells us lower bounds for our, our intercept and the um, and the gradient uh, why is this interesting well uh, we can say actually that our let's just simply look at the intercept here and uh, the um, the program told us that the intercept is uh, 21.98 so that's the uh, intercept, 21.98, so roughly 22. But, so that's, that's this number here. That's this 1 over Vmax. But, actually, it tells us more. It tells us that the intercept could be anywhere between 26.37 and 17.6. So this is basically the confidence interval of our intercept. So these are these two data here. So 26.37, that's this one here, that's the upper level and the, the here is the lower level. So, uh, since our intercept is basically, uh, how do I do that? We said Vmax is 1 over, no, 1 over 22. So we said this is our Vmax that we get from this calculation here. But in fact, it could be anywhere between 1 over 26.37 and 1 over 17.6. So it could be anywhere between 0 0.56 and 0 0.37 okay so this is where our intercept could uh, be located from this measurement and we can do the same thing I'll take a different color here uh, we can do the same thing for the uh, for the gradient and here with the gradient, we have again a very low p-value, which means the uh, result is statistically significant here. Sorry, here, this is our, uh, our gradient, this one here. And again it gives us a 95 percent confidence interval for our gradient so our gradient which is given here as 0 0.21 
is anywhere between 0.27 and 0 0.14. Um, so uh, when you do calculations, this uh, might be quite useful. Now, we set our intercept, our Vmax can be anything between 0 0.04 and 0 0.057. Now, let's see what we've just calculated. And here is our estimated Vmax from the uh, solver. And as you can see, this here, 0 0.055, is just a little bit lower, uh, it is within this uh, confidence interval. So bottom line really is uh, a line with a Berg plot gives you a rough idea what it could be. A much better way of finding the data is actually with the solver method, with the square, the least square of difference method with the solver. There are some other plots that you can uh, use, and one of them uh, is the uh, Eddie Hofstede plot. Eddie Hofstede plot. Uh, I have a video on YouTube how to do this Eddie Hofstede plot, and you will find that it is much more accurate than a line with a Berg plot. Um, what you hopefully also saw is that the regression analysis here is an incredibly useful tool because it actually shows you not just a fixed number for your, in, uh, for your gradient and the intercept, but it gives you uh, the lower and upper limits of the 95% confidence interval. So I suggest that you really look at your data, do the regression analysis, show this in your write-up here with the lower and upper limits, and that you also define then a lower and upper limits for your Km and Vmax. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.